Hi, I'm Derek, the Chief Information Officer, or CIO, at FictionalWidgets.com. Let's talk about my role as CIO, how cyber threats affect a CIO's priorities and the stakes involved. As CIO, I'm responsible for controlling my company's information technology resources. I oversee people, processes, and technologies to ensure they deliver outcomes that support the goals of our business. This includes everything from end-user computing, enterprise applications, data and voice communication systems, to deciding on my company's broader IT direction. To reach these objectives, I work closely with other C-level executives to understand our business priorities, then analyze and design our IT infrastructure to align with our business goals. I spend most of my time implementing our IT infrastructure. The technologies that I work with and my company invests in aim to streamline business processes, increase the productivity of our employees, improve the overall experience for our customers, and create a competitive advantage. My job is to develop strategies on how to maximize these effects while showing how these investments deliver measurable results. That's important because I'm constantly being asked to do more with less I need to justify the payoff in savings of money, time, or hopefully both. However, implementing cybersecurity is becoming a regular topic of conversation. We all hear about data breaches and ransomware, and I'm very concerned about keeping up with the growing list of attacks. To make it worse, there's different security products for each type of technology we have. Implementing all of these security products from a myriad of vendors would make managing our environment exponentially more complicated and expensive. Ideally, I would like to simplify our IT infrastructure. Do you want to know what else keeps me up at night? Here are some highlights. Am I spending wisely and in the right places in our infrastructure? If we had a breach and our data systems or applications were compromised, could I identify exactly what happened and locate all the damaged components? How will I even know that we've been breached? How do I deal with employees that wittingly or unwittingly cause a breach? What are the increased risks from deploying new technologies such as cloud computing or allowing employees to use their own devices on our internal networks? These consequences can be severe. Cybercrime against my organization can also trigger internal and third-party investigations, regulatory filings, lawsuits, and fines due to non-compliance with privacy and data protection legislation. Regulatory fines through legislation like Sarbanes-Oxley, Gramm-Leach-Bliley, HIPAA, GDPR, and others can severely affect our bottom line. Moreover, depending on the nature of the attack or incident, public disclosure can erode customer trust and lead to an immediate and ongoing decline in revenue. This, combined with what can be escalating and ongoing post-attack costs, can create investor concern and speculation, both of which can drive down market capitalization. Unfortunately, cyber attacks can also impact our company's productivity. Depending on the size and scope of the attack, Employees at all levels can see their time diverted to post-attack activities, such as dealing with public relations, investors, customers, and suppliers. Even worse, extended downtime can drastically cut into productivity. Translation, things can come to a grinding halt. And of course, it's the CIO that often gets the blame and loses their job as a result. That's probably why CIOs have among the shortest tenures among C-level executives.